Who are stoking troubles across the Taiwan Straits? While the mainland has repeatedly stressed that Chinese on both sides of the Taiwan Straits are one family bound by blood, authorities on the island have uh, rejected the consensus that both sides belong to one country. The United States, for its own selfish interests, keeps interfering on the issue and needs an obedient servant in control of the island. Since 2016, exchanges across the Straits plummeted and tensions went up. Welcome to a special edition of The Point with me, Liu Xin, on the Taiwan question. I will share with you highlights of my interviews with prominent figures on the island, including Yok Mu Ming, former chairman of Taiwan's new party, Ling Join Sein, former chairman of the Straits Exchange Foundation, a senior Kuomintang party member, and Lai Yue Qian, a Taiwan based political scholar and commentator. Born in Shanghai but had to leave for Taiwan when he was just eight, former chairman of Taiwan's new party, Yok Mu Ming, was separated from his mother for 20 years. Therefore, he has a deeper feeling of family separation and greater appreciation of what motherland means. What's his take on Taiwan leader Tsai Ing-wen's pro-independence stance? Will it work? And as a former leader of Taiwan region's third largest party, he said that the mainland is actually more democratic than Taiwan. Why is that? How do you look at the fact that uh, if you watch a media report on Western media, for instance, they would uh, label Taiwan first and foremost as a democracy and a successful one before they discuss the issue itself. The Chinese mainland is more democratic than Taiwan. The reason is clear. I'm speaking from my personal experience here. The Chinese mainland has a consultative system where the Communist Party is the ruling party, but the eight other democratic parties have the right to participate in politics. In Taiwan, it's an election system where whoever wins the election rules for four years or eight years without much participation from other parties. When the Kuomintang is in charge, the DPP does not have the right to participate. This is why the opposition party is always trying to bring down the ruling party. When the DPP is in charge, they settled old scores with the KMT. When I was the chairman, the new party is the third largest party, with 14% of the votes. Did I have the right to participate in politics? Not at all. So, if someone from Taiwan tries to argue with me, I'll say, who gave me the right to participate in politics? You call this a democracy? If my party was on the Chinese mainland, even though I'm not a member of the ruling party, I still have the right to participate in politics. Science and technology leaders on the mainland may not be members of the Communist Party. But because of their ability and qualifications, they have the right to participate in politics in important positions. This is democracy. Well, why do people keep voting for the uh, DPP? On the mainland, the government serves the people, but in Taiwan, they serve the voters. Serving the people means taking care of everyone, while serving the voters means only taking care of those who voted for you. That's why when the DPP is in power, they only take care of their own voters. During elections, they promise to take care of you, but not everyone. There is also this uh, narrative of describing the Taiwan issue as uh, authoritarianism versus democracy and a small country versus a big power that's bullying the other and that the, you know, the smaller country is standing up to a big bully. How do you look at this kind of comparison 
uh, that is applied to the issue to the relationship between the mainland and Taiwan. The Western countries, especially the U.S., they have a set of tricks to control developing countries. Using elections to make these countries listen to them, this is a political strategy. The U.S. uses the electoral system to deceive voters in developing countries. But when we do research and make comparisons, we find that there must be a reason why the Communist Party won and the Kuomintang lost, and why the Chinese mainland has developed so well while Taiwan has not. I have delved into this and analyzed all the systems and methods. I found that the mainland's consultative system has the support of the people, while Taiwan's electoral system only has partial support. How do you look at the uh, deterioration of livelihood over the past few years on Taiwan? It's because only a small group benefits, not everyone, and that's related to the electoral system. If you vote for me today, I'll give you benefits, but if you don't vote for me, I won't help you. That's the difference. Chinese mainland is not like that, so as I said, serving the people and serving the voters, they're not the same thing. And what is your comment on Tsai Ing-wen? I'd rather not comment because there is nothing to comment on. She has no say over her own actions. People in Taiwan often say that the fate of Taiwan is decided by the people of Taiwan. I'll be honest here. The fate of Taiwan has for a long time been decided by the Americans. I'm speaking politely here. In Taiwan, people have a shallow understanding of democracy. They think that as long as they have the right to decide who is in charge, it's democracy. So they believe that elections are very important, but elections can be manipulated and packaged. That's why so many people regret their choices after each election. How come you pick the wrong person every time? This is a problem with the system. Are you concerned, are you worried about the future of the Taiwan region? I think there's nothing good in Taiwan anymore. I'm actually beyond feeling worried. I said a few years ago that there won't be a 2024 for Taiwan, and I said it publicly. People at the time thought I was talking nonsense, but now it seems to be quite accurate. Cross-strait communication is necessary. It's good for both sides, and when people in Taiwan realize this, they will be willing to communicate with the mainland. Communication is a good thing for both sides, as we're all compatriots and one family. Will continuing to make trouble be good for Taiwan? The younger generation in Taiwan are awakening to this. That's why Tsai Ing-wen is having such a hard time now. Do you think reunification is very much down the line or there is no date in sight? And you have said that reunification is a big right thing to do. Why have you said that? Of course, I've asked many people if they think Taiwan and the mainland should reunite, and they say yes. But when will it happen? They say we just have to wait for everyone to work hard. Most people think like this. But for those of us who care about politics and cross-strait relations, we have a responsibility to open up opportunities for the future development of our next generation. We should not be selfish. We should unite with the mainland and face the world. Otherwise, Taiwan has no future. The so-called future is being controlled by outsiders. Do we want to be in charge of our own destiny? Of course we do. We should engage with our compatriots instead of relying solely on foreign contacts. The Chinese mainland has been very clear about it. The one country, two systems framework is part of the Chinese constitution. Taiwan is part of China. We are one country. As for two systems, we do have two political systems, and we're not trying to turn them into one system.
What is the mainland's policy towards reunification with Taiwan? Has it been very clear to you? The policy of the mainland is very clear, to serve the people. I think nothing explains it better than these words. Its target is the people, which includes the 1.4 billion compatriots at home and compatriots overseas. This is a call to the whole world. China wishes to serve its people. Developing exchanges leads to reunification. So ultimately, the end goal is reunification. So I say, if reunification is inevitable, why not do it sooner rather than later? Why drag it out? You actually said in one of your videos that you would even accept reunification by force. How do you mean? I said, if Chinese mainland is forced to react militarily to Taiwan independence, I would have to accept that. The mainland is committed to peaceful reunification with Taiwan. They have been trying hard to show their sincerity and goodwill because peaceful reunification is the best option for both sides. Making sense of the overwhelming wave of information means cutting through the noise to shine a light on the heart of the story and making room for new perspectives. True understanding means the ability to see events from more than one side. I'm Liu Xin, and this is The Point. Cross-Straits development must be peaceful. Peace is in the main interest of the, the people on both sides of the Taiwan Straits. So says Ling Join Sen, former chairman of the Straits Exchange Foundation. How to sustain long-term peace and avoid military conflicts? And where are cross-strait relations heading? The political bigwig shared his insights with me. Stay tuned. What is the best option for the future of Taiwan? The best option is peaceful development for Taiwan and the mainland. Only peaceful development can serve the greatest interests of people on both sides of the Taiwan Straits. So what exactly do you mean by peaceful development? That we keep the status quo the way it is across the strait, or, or the two sides eventually and officially become reunited as part of one country. Definitely, peaceful reunification is the ultimate goal. Across the Straits, we share the same bloodline, so we must never go to war. As for what kind of system can achieve integrated development, we must first bring the hearts of people on both sides together. Who should do this job? Every Chinese descendant must do so. Once the hearts of the people on both sides are in sync, we will all hope for peaceful, integrated development. Under this circumstance, everyone must work towards the future of the Chinese nation for the well-being of the people, for the greater good of both sides and the happiness of the people. We should all strive together towards this goal. What is the biggest obstacle standing in the way in your eyes? In a diverse society, everyone has their own opinions, requiring great wisdom to be merged effectively. As I mentioned earlier, the concept and method of integration require us to use wisdom, which is not always easy, especially when dealing with a large group of people.
Taiwan has a population of 23 million, and the Chinese mainland has a population of 1.4 billion. Even within a single family, it can be challenging to reconcile differing opinions. However, for the sake of our family's future and happiness, every member must strive towards the most favorable goal, which is peaceful and integrated development. Do you think things are developing towards that direction, that vision of yours? In Taiwan, sometimes the Kuomintang comes to power, sometimes the DPP does. There have been two alternations of party in power. The party in power has its own ideas and directions, but the people are still the same, and they expect to live happy and prosperous lives. They want peace, which is priceless, as war is ruthless. No one wants to see armed conflicts. Everyone hopes to coexist harmoniously. However, achieving this goal requires everyone's effort. It's like we're one big family and want to make our family happier and more prosperous, with a better future ahead. Just like a family, we need harmony and unity to thrive. It sounds simple, but it takes effort from everyone to achieve this goal. It seems there are people who do not agree with the vision that the mainland or people on the mainland and people on Taiwan um, belong to the same family. We live in a diverse society. Things would be much simpler if everyone had the same thoughts and ideas. However, we need to work hard to achieve unity because of our differences. Integrating our ideas requires wisdom and effort. How do you look at the impact of external influences? And I'm sure you know what I mean by external influences or external intervention. I understand that both our subjective opinions and external factors influence any situation's development. However, I empathize the need for wisdom. Simply put, external influences don't necessarily dictate our actions. We must use our wisdom to assess whether these influences are beneficial. Blindly following others is not the answer, as we must have our own thoughts and ideas. Our goal is to revitalize our family and promote happiness and harmony. This same principle applies to our country, as a family is a microcosm of a nation. When you talk about integrated development, do you mean reunification? What is the most favorable situation for our compatriots on both sides of the Taiwan Straits? As I mentioned earlier, peaceful development between the two sides is the most in line with the fundamental interests of the people on both sides. Both sides must use wisdom, be tolerant, strengthen mutual trust, and enhance consensus to achieve peaceful development. I served in the Straits Exchange Foundation for many years, so I know the cross-Straits relations and the formation of the 1992 consensus very well. In 1992, Ku Chun Fu was the first chairman of the SEF. Our mainland counterpart is the Association for Relations Across the Taiwan Straits, or ARATS. Wang Daohan was the first chairman of ARATS at that time. These two leaders had great wisdom, and they met in Hong Kong.
中央干部，大家在香港会商，会商当然，我刚才讲就是。I have just said that so many people are on both sides of the Taiwan Straits. It was challenging to integrate different ideas. They didn't reach a conclusion in Hong Kong immediately. After several exchanges of letters, phone calls, and official documents, we finally got a consensus. The consensus, in simple terms, is that both sides agree to express the One China principle through verbal declarations, which turns it into a mutual agreement between the two sides. The ultimate goal was to turn differences into the common ground through patient negotiation. But it seems that time is not on our side, meaning the longer the issue remains unresolved, the less likely it is for people on both sides to reunite with each other. What is your view? Some people are saying we should reunite with each other as fast as possible. I like your idea. The integration of both sides needs wisdom. Some young people in Taiwan have been influenced. The current government has its ideas after the political party in power in Taiwan underwent two alternations. In about six months, we will have another opportunity for the people to choose. This opportunity is not about doing whatever we want, but for the entire population to make a choice. What do we choose? We prefer happy families, a happy life, a prosperous country, and a future with potential. I believe that people will make wise choices. To ensure that happens, candidates and parties participating in the election must persuade the people by presenting their ideas and concepts. Taiwan is a society of freedom, democracy, and diversity. To persuade people, we must use our wisdom for our happiness. Why did Deputy Taiwan leader Lai Qingde insist on stopping over in the United States earlier this month? As campaigning gets underway for the next leadership race early next year on the island, what does Lai want to prove to the United States and what does the U.S. want to see in him as a strong contender? I spoke to Lai Yue-Chen, a well-known Taiwan-based political scholar and commentator.赖清德的过访美国其实是在为他的选举造势铺路目的就是在于他要向台湾的民众展现出他背后有美国人可以依靠美国之前放出一个讯号说美国对于台独的赖清德不信任其实我倒觉得那是一个幌子美国是对于
，因为连我在当行政院院长的时候，我都说我是务实的台独工作者，而且我在之前我还高举台独万岁。然后呢，我还被台独说我是台独精孙，我还洋洋得意。我今天都否认我是台独精孙了，难道不就证明我是可控制的吗？所以这一切都是为了能够上位。对的，因为他要告诉美国，我是可以被你控制的，请你支持我。因为他知道在台湾有很多亲美的，只要美国支持，那基本上他的主力就消失了一大半。那民众呢？台湾的民众会这么容易误导吗？他们看不透这里面的戏吗？台湾的民众看不透的。你看台湾的评论里面都以为啊，美国在意的是他是不是台独，不是？美国怎么会在乎他是不是台独呢？美国只在乎他可不可控，可控才最重要。我要你叫台独你就叫，我要你闭嘴你就闭嘴，这个才是对美国人来讲，这个牌才好打。台湾问题归根结底。是什么问题？是什么原因造成的？岛内岛外的因素，到底各占几层吧？我觉得内战问题就在于蒋介石，他不承认失败，所以他就引进了外力，把美国的力量引进来，把日本的力量引进来，然后这个内战持续太久了，而且走得太长，所以台湾。太久没有跟大陆真正的来往，疏离感产生了，再加上美国，他清楚的知道可以利用台湾做一个牌，来向中国大陆讨价还价。在过去，美国曾经成功过，也就是大概在两千零五年吧，当时美国就用台湾牌，因为是民进党的陈水扁执政，他就提到要陈水扁去喊独立。陈水扁去喊独立，对中国大陆的领导者来说压力就很大，他必须要解决这问题。可是，在当时的军力、国力、经济能力做不到，那怎么办？就只好由美国来解决台湾的问题。可是交换什么？中国损失非常的惨重，西方人得到巨大的利益。那你想想看，他们当然不希望两岸统一，因为台湾这个牌这么好打。一直到现在才踢到铁板，因为习近平不可能让他们再打台湾牌，重蹈两千零五年的覆辙。所以您看，他们就只好一直升高台湾的问题，一直希望把台湾的问题升高到逼于火线之间，然后逼着中国大陆让步。那问题就在于，我觉得美国它的谋略得不了，然后问题就在于。台湾的民进党跟美国的谋略的合作，你可以看到内部的问题、外部的问题、历史的问题纠结在在一起，所以目前的情况，两岸的问题难解是在现在。可是我对于未来来说，我没有那么悲观。我觉得，因为随着大陆的发展越来越好，台湾的民众看到大陆的发展，迟早很多的想法会改变。